Buying insurance is not just about finding the cheapest option or solely focusing on the premium cost. It's about making a comprehensive and informed decision that takes into account the reputation and financial stability of the insurance company that's offering to provide you with financial protection. Making a generational impact starts with one, one person, one family, one community. And so the Gen 1 Legacy is my attempt to help first gen tech professionals like you get your financial house in order so you can live your legacy. Whether you love it or hate it, getting and maintaining the right insurance coverage is one of the most crucial financial decisions you have to make to build and preserve your financial wealth. Now, up until recently, the only way to get the coverage you needed was to work directly with an insurance salesperson. Even so, with various options and so many policy decisions coming down to just a few mouse clicks, you now have more power than ever at your fingertips to protect your wealth. To be sure, just like managing taxes and evaluating spending decisions, having the right insurance protections in place is akin to keeping more of what you make. You see, that's because when the unexpected arises, the right insurance policy can step in and transfer a potential financial loss from your pocketbook to that of an insurance company. For example, if you suddenly become ill and an emergency room visit turns into a months long stay at the hospital, the right kind of insurance can potentially save you thousands of dollars in medical bills. To be sure, at the end of the day, insurance for all its negative connotations as an expense that rarely pays out can actually be one of the most valuable financial decisions you can ever make. Now, it's important to note that not all insurance companies are created equal, and that's why by understanding the basics of ideal providers and policies can help you buy insurance like a pro as you go about purchasing this essential coverage for yourself and for your family. Now, make no mistake, navigating the world of buying insurance can be daunting, yet it's a journey most of us need to undertake regardless of whether we're talking about property and casualty, health, life, or disability insurance. So then, what's the first step that you need to take when evaluating your current or new potential insurance provider? Well, a common mistake many individuals make is buying insurance based solely on the premium they anticipate paying. Indeed, when it comes to buying insurance, many individuals' first question is, how much is this going to cost me? Or is this my cheapest option? But when it comes to buying insurance, the real question should be, how will this insurance carrier provide for me over the long term? You see, too often, many individuals focus on the policy without first understanding who's underwriting the policy to begin with. Now, to understand this perspective, you can imagine insurance as a safety net strung under you as a tightrope walker. Now, the purpose of the safety net is to catch you if you slip and help you bounce back in the event of an accident. And in this situation, it's absolutely crucial that that net is sturdy, that it's reliable, and that it's well-maintained. So then from this perspective, the safety net being that insurance policy and the insurance company is the keeper of that safety net. And while you may believe that you've purchased the best safety net available, it's the handler's ability to manage that net that can make or break your financial situation when the unexpected arises. So then how can you tell if you're in good hands? Well, this is where reputation comes into play. Indeed, reputation tells you how well an insurance provider has maintained safety nets for others in the past. More specifically, reputation reflects the company's past actions, which speaks volumes about its credibility and track record of delivering on its promises. It sheds light on essential facets like their claim settlement ratio, their responsiveness to customer needs, and their willingness to step up when the need arises. After all, it would be a cold comfort to know that you have an insurance policy in place, and yet your provider hesitates to act or complicates the claim settlement process during a critical time of need. So then, as you consider your insurance purchasing decisions, start with reputation first. Another point to consider when it comes to your purchasing decision is the financial stability of your insurance carrier. Here again, let's say that you're commissioning a piece of artwork that's to be completed and delivered in a year. Naturally, you'll not only consider the artist's reputation, but also their craftsmanship and their commitment, right? And how about their financial stability? After all, if they go out of business in six months, the commission won't serve its purpose. Now, in a similar way, an insurance company's financial stability ensures that they can fulfill their long-term financial commitments to you. So what makes a insurance company financially stable? Well, a financial financially stable insurance company is one that can weather economic storms and come out unscathed. They can handle a sudden influx of claims in the wake of a natural disaster or a pandemic and continue their operations without a hitch. What's more, these financially stable institutions typically have sufficient reserves to fulfill their obligations and they manage their investments wisely. So then over the long term, their stability translates into consistent protection for you and other policyholders. Now, how do you judge the reputation and stability of an insurance company? Well, you can start with a simple comparison. Imagine planning a trip to a distant, unfamiliar familiar location. In this situation, just as you would rely on reviews and experiences of past travelers, you should also consider the reputation of the insurance company for those who have dealt with them before. You can do this by browsing through online customer reviews and ratings, testimonials, and complaint forms. Now, these can all provide invaluable insights into the real-world experiences of policyholders. And as you're doing this work, look for patterns in the feedback to see if there's a common issue raised by multiple customers, such as difficulties in claims processing or poor customer service. At the same time, you can also check the company's ratings 
on the Better Businesses Bureau website, which provides information about customer complaints and how they were resolved. Remember, the goal isn't necessarily to find a company with zero negative reviews because that's nearly impossible. Instead, what you're looking for is an insurance provider that has consistently demonstrated good faith and efficiency in addressing customer concerns and fulfilling their claims. All right, so now that we've talked about reputation, what about financial stability? Well, to gauge stability, one of the most straightforward approaches is to rely on the expert assessment made by insurance rating agencies such as AM Best, Standard & Poor's, Moody's, and Fitch. Now, these agencies provide ratings based on their in-depth analysis of the insurance company's financial strength and ability to meet ongoing insurance policy and contract obligations. Here, intuitively, a higher rating from these agencies suggests that the insurance company is financially capable of fulfilling its commitments to its policyholders. And a lower rating might mean that you should tread cautiously as you consider purchasing a policy from a given provider. Now, another approach you may want to consider when evaluating financial strength is diving into a company's annual financial reports. Now, while these sorts of analysis may seem a bit daunting at first, reviewing these reports can give you key insights into the company's overall financial health. All right, so once you've narrowed down your choice of insurance providers based on reputation and financial stability, you'll likely face the daunting task of dealing with many terms and conditions, the fine print, legal jargon, and other factors when it comes to purchasing your property and casualty, health, life, or disability coverage. Now, while sifting through these details may seem daunting, understanding an insurance policy's coverages, benefits, limits, and exclusions forms the cornerstone of your insurance purchasing decision and can at times make the difference between having the right protection in place when you need it the most. For example, consider a scenario where you're shopping for a new car. Now, you wouldn't make a purchase based on color alone, right? You'd also want to understand the car's features like its mileage or its safety ratings and any other potential issues it may have. Here, in much the same way when shopping for insurance, you need to consider more than just the premium cost or the insurance company itself. So how do you go about considering these features? Well, to start, consider the coverage and benefits offered by the insurance policy you're considering purchasing. That's because these items outline what the policy will pay for and under what circumstances. For example, in the case of health insurance, a policy could include coverage for hospitalization, outpatient procedures, prescription medicines, and preventative care. At the same time, in the case of property insurance, it could cover damage or loss due to certain perils like fire, theft, or natural disasters. Either way, understanding these elements helps ensure that the policy you're purchasing suits your needs and that you're not left with any unexpected gaps in coverage when the unexpected strikes. Now, another thing you want to consider is limits and exclusions. And so what are we talking about here? Well, imagine for a moment that you just bought a fantastic umbrella to protect yourself from the rain. Now, what if this amazing umbrella only keeps the top of your head dry, but allows the rest of your body to get soaked? Here in this example, insurance policy limits are like the size of your umbrella. They define the maximum amount that the insurer will pay out for a specific claim or for the policy term. So then understanding these limits will help you assess if the potential payout will be sufficient to cover your needs in the event of a claim, and hence whether it's worth buying a specific policy in the first place. And what about exclusion? Here, exclusions are situations or circumstances under which your policy won't cover you, much like an umbrella that doesn't open in certain storms. Common examples of exclusions include pre-existing conditions in healthcare, insurance, or certain types of natural disasters when it comes to property and casualty insurance. That's why being aware of these exclusions can help you better understand the boundaries of your coverage and can save you from an unpleasant surprise when you actually need to make a claim. So then, as you go about purchasing insurance, what steps can you take to evaluate a policy's coverage, benefits, limits, and exclusions? Well, what you want to do is first consider your coverage and your benefits. For example, imagine that you're standing in front of two fruit stands. Now, both of these stands sell apples, but only one stand offers a variety of fruit, while one just sells apples. So then if you're looking for a fruit medley, the choice is clear. Go with the fruit stand that sells a variety of fruits. Now here in a similar way, when evaluating insurance policies, take a close look at what's covered and what benefits are being offered and start your decision-making process from there. And how do you go about doing this work? Well, you can start by identifying your needs and your risks. For instance, if you live in a region that's prone to earthquakes and you're shopping for property insurance, make sure that the policy you're exploring covers damage from natural disasters like earthquakes. And when assessing health insurance, consider your family's health history and lifestyle and ask whether you need coverage for prescription drugs, mental health services, or maternity care. And once you've figured out your unique insurance needs, then you can compare how different policies cater to each one of those needs. All right, once you've evaluated your coverage and your benefits, then it's time to turn your attention to the less glamorous but equally essential elements of insurance purchasing decisions, and that's policy limits and exclusions. Here again, this process is like buying a ticket to a concert. Here, you want to just check if the band you like is playing. You also want to know where your seat is and if there are any restrictions on that ticket purchase, right? So then from this perspective, insurance policy limits specify the maximum amount the insurer will pay either per claim
claim or over the policy term. For example, if you're purchasing life insurance, you'll need to calculate the financial needs of your dependents. And if it's health insurance and you have a pre-existing health condition, then you'll want to consider potential costs for future hospitalization or surgeries. Then compare these amounts to the policy limits offered by the insurance you're evaluating. And also don't forget about exclusions. Now you'll likely recall that exclusions are circumstances under which your policy won't provide coverage. Here, if we go back to the concert analogy, we can think of exclusions being akin to restrictions like your ticket not allowing you to access certain sections of the venue. That's why in a similar way, understanding policy exclusions lets you know under what circumstances your insurance will or won't protect you. Here again, some health insurance policies exclude coverage for pre-existing conditions. Or when it comes to property and casualty insurance, certain types of natural disasters like floods or earthquakes won't be covered under a standard policy. That's why comparing these exclusions across policies will give you a clear idea of what scenarios are and aren't covered. Now, undoubtedly, mastering the benefits of coverages, benefits, limits, and exclusions is a cornerstone in evaluating how solid the insurance policy that you're purchasing will be. Yet one final thing to consider beneath these basic aspects lies a hidden layer of potential costs, which are often less perceptible, but capable of significantly influencing your insurance plan's value and cost effectiveness. All right, so to start a discussion on costs, let's begin by first spotlighting coinsurance, which is a term referring to the portion of covered healthcare costs that fall on your shoulders after meeting your deductible. And so how can coinsurance affect your purchasing decision? Well, here again, picture yourself deciding between two healthcare plans. In one option, you notice a tempting lower coinsurance percentage, hinting at fewer out-of-pocket costs for you in the future. Yet there's a twist, and that's that this plan carries higher premiums. Now, in this situation, balancing these elements to match your healthcare needs means paying special attention to factors like your current health situation and how often you plan on using your insurance when considering whether a lower coinsurance and higher premium is worth it to you. So from here, let's transition over to the realm of copays. Now, copays are not the imposing dragons of the insurance world, but rather small, pesky fees you pay for specific services or prescriptions. Now, a single copay might seem negligible, but different policies carry diverse copay structures and the Depending on your health situation, like a swarm of bees, these small charges can quickly accumulate, significantly disrupting your financial situation over time. All right, so now that we've discussed coinsurance and copays, let's talk about the concept of out-of-pocket maximums. And what are out-of-pocket maximums? Well, it's typically the ceiling of what you pay for covered services within a policy period. And once you reach this apex, your insurance takes over the baton, covering 100% of the benefits. Now imagine two mountains representing two different health plans. One has a higher peak of out-of-pocket maximum, but a more manageable climb or lower premiums, while the other boasts a lower summit, which is lower out-of-pocket maximums, but a steeper ascent, which is higher premiums. So then which mountain should you decide to climb? Well, choosing the right mountain to climb demands careful consideration of your ability to manage higher medical costs. Now, while we've used health insurance as an example when it comes to coinsurance or co-pays and out-of-pocket expenses, it's essential to note that these concepts apply just as well to property and casualty coverages like your home or auto policies as well. So as you're shopping for insurance, be sure to evaluate how much you'll be on the hook for out-of-pocket expenses when you do have an uninsurable event. All right, and the final thing we'll talk about here, now that we've talked about out-of-pocket expenses, is a less commonly discussed aspect of insurance, and that's policy writers. And what are writers? Well, these add-ons to a basic policy can provide valuable extra protection, but can also significantly alter the costs, which is why understanding them is so essential in your decision-making and purchasing process. And how so? Well, picture yourself setting up an insurance policy like constructing a house. The coverage, benefits, limits, and exclusions form the foundation in the walls, while riders are the custom upgrades like a sunroom or fancy kitchen. They add value and tailor the policy to your needs, but they also come at a cost. For example, when it comes to your health insurance, you might come across a rider that provides coverage for critical illness like cancer or heart disease. Now, this rider can give you peace of mind knowing that if you were to be diagnosed with a serious illness, that your policy will cover a wider range of costs related to your treatment, but just know that you will pay more for the coverage up front. Another area where riders are useful is in disability insurance. Now, for these types of policies, there might be a rider that guarantees the option to increase coverage in the future with a rise of cost of living without the need to redo a medical exam. And in the life insurance space, one common rider is the waiver of premium rider, which would continue your coverage without a premium if you were to become disabled or unable to work. Now, this sort of coverage can provide you with invaluable financial relief in circumstances where you're looking for that life insurance coverage, but for whatever reason, can't pay the premium. And finally, when it comes to property and casualty insurance, a replacement cost rider on your home's insurance policy could ensure that in the event of a loss, you're being reimbursed for the full cost of the items in your home rather than just their depreciated value. Now, while these riders sound great at 
at face value, it's essential to note here that they come with additional premiums. That's why when considering each rider, you should weigh the extra cost against the potential benefit that it would provide. At the same time, you should also be aware that some riders may have exclusions or conditions, so it's crucial to read the fine print before you sign on the dotted line. Now, make no mistake, buying insurance is not just about finding the cheapest option or solely focusing on the premium cost. It's about making a comprehensive and informed decision that takes into account the reputation and financial stability of the insurance company that's offering to provide you with financial protection. Remember, when it comes to evaluating reputation, you can rely on customer reviews, ratings, and testimonials, as well as checking the company's ratings on platforms like the Better Business Bureau and evaluating their financial stability by checking ratings from companies like AM Best, Standard & Poor's, Moody's, and Fitch. And once you've assessed reputation and financial stability, it's important to consider the coverage, benefit, limits, and exclusions of your various policy choices. Remember, understanding what the policy covers, under what circumstances, and potential limitations ensures that you choose a policy that aligns with your specific needs and provides adequate protection. And finally, be aware of any hidden costs that may impact the value and cost effectiveness of your insurance plan. These include factors like co-insurance, co-pays, out-of-pocket maximums, and other potential charges in premiums over time that can significantly influence the overall value of the policy you're about to buy. That's why it's essential to take the time to understand these costs and weigh them against the potential benefits they may provide. And by considering all of these factors and making a well-informed decision, you can buy insurance like a pro and take one step closer to becoming the master of your own financial independence journey. To learn more about today's topic, you can visit the episodes page at LegacyGen1.com. And if you can find one person in your life who would benefit from today's message, please share this episode with them. But until next time, I'm Peter Donisano, wishing you and yours abundant health and prosperity. The Gen 1 Legacy Podcast is brought to you by Franklin Madison Private Wealth. Franklin Madison Private Wealth is a registered investment advisor firm with its registration and principal place of business in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Registration of an investment advisor does not imply a certain level of skill or training. The information shared today is not intended to be personal, legal, investment, or tax advice, or solicitation to buy or sell any security, or engage in a particular investment strategy. The commentary and forecasts are limited to the dissemination of and general information pertaining to Franklin Madison Private Wealth's investment advisory services and are based on economic and market conditions that are subject to change without notice. For additional information about Franklin Madison Private Wealth, including fees and services, please contact Franklin Madison Private Wealth or refer to the Investment Advisor Public Disclosures.